Hello, we are Cloud Faro, and we would like to present to you a short tutorial on how to download satellite data using the CreoDS platform and visualize it in QGIS. CreoDS is a public cloud computing platform providing open and free access to Earth observation data and tools for its visualization and processing. It was built and is operated by Cloud Faro under the Copernicus program managed by the European Space Agency. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will use the QGIS desktop software. QGIS is a free, user-friendly, open-source geographic information system licensed under general public license. Therefore, it can be used by anyone. Let's start with the CreoDS platform. First of all, if we want to find the dataset and download it, we have to be a registered user. If we already have our user account, we can simply log in. Otherwise, please click the register button. Now that we are logged in, we can start using the Data Explorer app, which is a helpful tool to find our data set of interest. Using this search bar, we can type the name of the place we'd like to see. Next, we choose the imagery types. If you want more information about the imagery types, hover over the information icon. Now we can choose the percentage of cloud coverage. It's an important indicator of how much of our image is covered by clouds. Keep in mind, the less clouds are visible, the clearer the photo will be. Let's try to find photos with 5% cloud coverage and see what imagery we can find. Next, we can pinpoint the exact dates. We can specify the sensing dates, which are the dates of photo acquisition, or the publication dates, when the data was published. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the, the sensing dates. So, we'll start from the 1st of July and finish on the last day of that month. A lot of fires have been observed on roads this July, so I think we will find an interesting photo showing that phenomenon. The next step is to select the mission from which our satellite imagery will be picked. Here we can choose satellites or products we would like to use. We will use Sentinel-2. Then we can choose the product type. We will choose products processed at level 2A. If you want more information about the missions, click on the designated icon. Then we can identify our area of interest. We can do it by drawing a polygon or selecting a point. For now, to find the area that interests us, we will choose the polygon selection. Let's move the map to the place we want to find the data from. I will find the data from Greece, Rhodes Island to be exact. Let's zoom in and draw the polygon over the area. With a few clicks, we have a shape defining the area. We can now move on to searching. Here we can see the number of products found assigned to the given mission. To see the images from a specific mission, we click on them. Now we need to find an image that we like. I will choose the photo from July 23rd and download it. After downloading the image, we can move to QGIS to visualize the data. Note that if you're familiar with other similar softwares, for example ArcGIS, you are free to use it. Now that we are in QGIS, we first create a new project. Then we have to add new layers to this project, so let's go to the Layer menu and then click Add Layer and Add Raster Layer. After that, we should move to the folder with our data sets. The Sentinel-2 folder is here, already unpacked. Now we have to go to the granule folder. This is the folder where the tiles are kept. So we open L2A and then we go open image data. As we all know, Sentinel has different bands in different resolutions. They are divided into 10, 20 or 60 meter resolutions. We will work with a 10 meter resolution. We will choose four Sentinel bands. They are going to be bands 2, 3, 4 and 8. They're bands from both the visible light spectrum as well as infrared. Let's add them to the project. As you can see, the Sentinel band is now displayed in grayscale. Here we can see all of the layers. We need to combine a few layers together to get colorful imagery. So let's go to raster. From there, we click miscellaneous and then build virtual raster. We will import layers, in our case bands, to this virtual raster and select them all. Remember to take the place each input file into a separate band checkbox. This ensures we do not put all the layers in one band and makes it possible to achieve different color compositions. After all that is done, we can run the process. Now we can finally see the colorful imagery. We can change the symbology of the bands, so let's try to do it by going here by double clicking. Next, go to Symbology. Here we can choose different band combinations. 
let's choose the RGB combination in real life color visualization. So, red band will be band 3, in green band we will put band 2, for blue band we will use band 1. Next, we click OK. And now we can see the RGB visualization. You can also enhance the visualization by simply changing the brightness, saturation, and contrast. We are going to bright up our imagery a bit. Let's click Apply, and then OK. And now our picture looks like this. If you would like to cut a part of your imagery out, go to the Raster menu, and then click Extraction and clip Raster by Extent. Then we need to choose Draw on Canvas. To crop it, we will draw a simple shape on the photo. After that, click Run. When the process is done, we should be able to see the cropped image, like here, add it to the map window. We will rename the cropped image as Rotos. We can also change the symbology a bit like before to obtain real-life RGB color visualization. Click Apply and OK. Now that this image is ready, we can adjust it further. To detect an area with vegetation, we will create a color infrared band combination. This band combination allows vegetation to be detected in the image. In this combination, vegetation is represented in red, and what is not vegetation is in pale blue. This will allow us to easily identify the burnt area. To do the infrared band combination, we will change the symbology of the bands. To do this, we go to Symbology as before. Let's choose the RGB combination in the infrared color visualization. So, red band will be band 4, near infrared. In green band, we will put band 3. And in blue band, we are going to use band 2. And now we can save our image. We can do that by going to the project menu, then clicking Import Export and Export Map to Image. Now we select Calculate from Layer Rotos. We will also change the resolution to 300 dpi. By default, your imagery will be saved in the PNG format. Keep in mind that you can change it as you have a list of other available formats. Now we choose the location and name of our image. We'll save it as Rhodes. When it's finally saved, we can visualize it on our computers. With just a few steps, we have created a nice image of Rhodes captured by the Sentinel-2 satellite. To find out more about the CryoDS platform, please visit our website and see for yourself just how easy it is to work with Earth observation data. If you have any additional questions or if you need support, you can send a message to our email address provided below. We hope to see you again.